Green Tree Productions is proud to present Duncanville Weekly News. It's the good news just for the city of champions, Duncanville, Texas. And now, here's your host, John Thompson. Hello world, America, Texas, and Duncanville, and welcome to this edition of Duncanville Weekly News for the last part of March, first part of April 2019. Thanks for logging on and watching. Well, it's all baseball this time as the Panthers are into their district play, and here's how they did the last couple of weeks. It's springtime here in Texas, and that means Duncanville Panther baseball right here on Duncanville Weekly News and the Panther Dugout Show. The Panther Dugout Show brings us updates and highlights of the past few games and a peek ahead to the Panthers' next games. The Panther Dugout Show is brought to us by Jane's Memorial Chapel, the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James, by Leon Miller Commercial Properties, and by the Wolverton Company. Tuesday night, the FUIL District 86A schedule at Bob Bromback Field began with those dangerous Richardson Bartner Rams who have won one game all season. The Panthers starting lineup is And now the starting lineup Mario Trujillo Playing catcher number 8 Nick Chavez Playing third base, number 16, Ray Jaramillo. Oh. DH tonight, number 24, Mark Ibarra. Playing right field, number 13, Rolando Ramirez. Pitching for the Panthers tonight, number 18, Nick Flores. Oh. Playing shortstop, number 11, Ricardo Rangel. Playing left field, number 15, Ramiro Montiel. Playing first base, number 10, Noah Martel. As seen, Nicholas starts on the mound, and he gets him out in the top of the first. Mario leads off for the Panthers in the bottom of the first with a hit to right field. Then with one out, Ray almost knocks the third baseman down, reaching first. And Mario goes to second. Mark reaches first base on a catcher's interference call to load the bases. But two good plays on this ball hit by Rolando. Got him out. And it's nothing to nothing after one. Leading off the second with it still nothing to nothing, Nicholas walks and Elijah courtesy runs for him. But was thrown out going to second trying to steal. Ricardo reaches on an infielder's error. And then freshman Romero Montel hits a shot to left. Pushing Ricardo to third, and he takes second on the throw. Next up, Noah hits a fly ball to center, and the center fielder catches it and throws to third as Elijah scores on the sacrifice fly, but Romero is out at third on the throw. For out number three, and it's one to nothing Panthers after two. Going to the Panther third, it's still one to nothing. With one away, Nick gets hit by a pitch. And Clayton Stribling courtesy runs for the catcher. Ray is next, and he hits the left field fence 
Scoring Clayton with a double. Ray went to third base on a wild pitch, and then Mark hits a bullet through the drawn-in infield, scoring Ray, and it's three to nothing. Then with two outs, Nicholas singles to right field, and Mark goes to second base. And again, Elijah courtesy runs for the pitcher. But they're left stranded, and after three complete, it's three to nothing, Panthers. Still three to nothing, going to the bottom of the fifth inning. And with one away, Ray singles to right. And then Mark takes a pitch off the neck. And Ray goes to second. Both runners move up on a wild pitch before Rolando walks to load them. Nicholas gets another single to left to score Ray and Christian Romo, who was running for Mark, and it's five to nothing with Rolando on third. Elijah Courtesy runs for the pitcher who is on second base with still just one away. Ricardo is next, and he is intentionally walked to reload the bases. And then Romero grounds to shortstop, but his throw to second to force is late, and that scores Rolando, and it's six to nothing with still the bases loaded. A walk to Noah plated Elijah, and it's seven to nothing and still loaded with Adrian Mendoza up. A wild pitch plated Ricardo, and it's eight to nothing. Adrian Mendoza walks to reload them. Nick says, let's get this over. And singles to right to plate Noah and Romero with runs nine and 10 to mercy rule it. It's over final Panthers 10 and the Rams nothing. The Panthers go one and oh in district and 10 and four on the season. Leon Miller Commercial Properties is a proud sponsor of the Panthers Dugout Show on Duncanville Weekly News. As he enjoys helping to promote our DHS athletes as no one else is. Leon owns office and retail space in the heart of Duncanville on Main Street. If you're looking for a convenient, accessible, and well-kept space to rent, call Leon at 972-709-7181. He'll fix you up. Then on Thursday, not Friday, the Panthers made the trek up to Richardson Berkner to play the Rams. And with one out in the first, Nick doubles to center and moves to third base on a ground out, which was out number two. Nicholas is next. And he doubles to right center to plate Nick. but was left stranded. But after one half inning, it's one to nothing, Panthers. Ricardo Rangel was the starting pitcher for the Panthers, but gave up two runs on a home run in the first. So after one, it's two to one, Berkner. That lead didn't last long as the Panthers in their second with two out and none on. Noah unloads a home run over the left center field fence. And after one and a half, it's two to two. In the Panther third with no outs, still tied at two. Nick hits another double. And Edward Ramirez courtesy runs for the Panther catcher. And then next up is Ray. Think he has flied out to center field, but the ball is between the outfielders and down. Scoring Edward with the go-ahead run. Nicholas walks, 
And Roland sacrifices the runners up, but beats out his bunt. And Ray breaks for the plate and looks like he's out, but the catcher can't hang on to the ball. So run number four is in, and there's still two runners on base with no outs. Ricardo is next and drives in both Nicholas and Rolando, hitting the ball through the drawn-in infield, and it's 6-2. to two. After Rolando was thrown out at second, attempting to steal, Romero reaches base, hitting the ball to the Ram left fielder, but was stranded. But after two and a half, it's now 6-2, to two. Panthers. Nothing really changed until the bottom of the seventh when Cesar Santos came in to finish the game on the mound with one on and none out. One strike out. Two strikeouts. A pop-up. But... So it's six to three. Then after walking the next batter, the third strikeout ended it. Final, Panther six and those Richardson Berkner Rams three. The Panthers are now eleven and four on the season and two and zero oh in district play. James Memorial Chapel is the only family owned funeral home in Duncanville and is proud to offer caring and dedicated services from familiar friends. Rick James and his family, the owners of James Memorial Chapel and Funeral Home, have served Duncanville area families in their time of loss since 1998. A beautiful and spacious chapel is offered and James serves all cemeteries. When it comes to finding people you can trust in a time of need, you can turn to James Memorial Chapel. No one else knows families better. 811 South Cockrell Hill in Duncanville. When Carrollton Creekview couldn't play Saturday's game with the Panthers on the schedule because they had a rainout of one of their district games that they had to make up. So Coach Fahey made arrangements to play at Irving MacArthur when they had lost to the Panthers in that 14-12 to game three weeks ago. And this one was a little more civil. A scary moment in the top of the first when Mark – grounds to third and the first baseman takes the bad throw and pushes his glove into Mark's face. He had to come out of the game. Cesar Santos is on the bump for the Panthers and there's no score going to the third and Mario leads off reaching on a shortstop throwing error. Then Nick shows bunt but hits it over the right fielder's head for a triple to score Mario. With one out, Adrian Mendoza, who is in for Mark, hits it past the third baseman to score Nick, and it's two to nothing. After Adrian's double. And then with two outs, Adrian still on second. Cesar doubles to left center to score Adrian. And after two and a half, it's three to nothing. Panthers. In the Cardinal fourth, with it still three to nothing. Panthers. They have runners on first and third. And this hit to left plates a cardinal run with one out and runners still on first and third. This double play ended the inning with the Panthers still leading 3-1. to one. In the bottom of the fifth, still 3-1, to one, Alex Sierra comes in to relieve Cesar. And then in the Panther sixth with two out and none on. Mario reaches on a shortstop throwing error and ends up on second base. Then Nick hits it to second base 
and the second baseman's throw is not caught at first, and Mario scores, and Nick goes on to second. Then Ray walks. Adrian is next, and he slaps it to left field. Scoring Romero. Courtesy running for Nick and Ray. And he has a double, and it's 6-1, to one, all three with two outs and none on. And we're after five and a half. We go to the bottom of the seventh. Still 6-1, to one, Panthers. And Nicholas comes in to pitch the seventh, relieving Alex. And with two outs and none on, the Cardinal batter swings at a ball in the dirt. And Nick misses the pitch and has to scramble, but he does. And he gets it to Noah for the final out of the game. Final Panther six and the MacArthur Cardinals one. The Panthers are now 12 and four on the season. On Tuesday afternoon, the Panthers were at Skyline, the only other undefeated team in District 86A. Mario leads off drawing a walk, as does Nick, and they both move up on a wild pitch. When Ray strikes out, the Raider catcher misses the pitch, and when he throws to first, he and the first baseman can't connect, and Mario scores. And Elijah, courtesy running for Nick, goes to third. Rolando singles to right to play Elijah and Ray. And it's three to nothing. Then Nick gets a base hit to left. And Adrian, courtesy running, scores. And it's four to nothing, Panthers. I'm excited to be your scoreboard for today. My name is Pam Salinas Flores. I am mother of Nicholas Flores, your left-handed pitcher, senior, number 18. As his mom mentioned, Nicholas is on the mound for the Panthers today. After one, the score is Panthers four, Skyline Raiders zero. In the second, Romero leads off, hitting it to left to get on base, and he steals second, and he goes to third on a wild pitch. Noah drives him home with a single to left. And it's five to nothing. Then with one out, Nick gets an infield hit. And Noah goes to second. Ray hits it past the first baseman to plate Noah. But Elijah is out at the plate. So. After two innings, the score is Duncanville 6, Raiders 0. In the Raider third, they have two on and... This hit to left plates a couple. After three innings, Skyline scores two. Score is now Panther six, Raiders two. In the Panther fourth, Romero leads off with a walk and goes to second on a wild pitch. Then Noah walks. After Mario walked to load the bases, They walk Nick to force in Romero, and it's 7-2. to two. Ray is next, and he hits a fly ball to left. And Noah scores on the sacrifice fly. And it's 8-2. to two. A wild pitch with Rolando at the plate scores Mario, and it's 9-2. to two. Middle of the fourth, Duncanville scores three. Score is now nine, Raiders two. In the sixth we go, and 
There's two outs and none on, and Ray takes one on the right elbow. Adrian walks Ray to second, and then Rolando triples to right center to score Ray and Adrian, and it's 11-2. to two. Nicholas hits it very high, and the skyline second baseman can't catch it. And Rolando scores. Middle of the sixth inning, Duncanville scores three, scores now 12, Raiders two. Cesar pitches the sixth inning for the Panthers, and they have a runner on first with two outs when the runner tries to steal. Nick guns him out with Mario applying the tag for out number three. The At the end of the evening, Duncanville wins against Skyline Raiders, the final score of 12-2. to The Panthers are now 13-4 and on the season and 3-0 and in district play and the only undefeated team in District 86A district play. The Panther Dugout Show is sponsored by the Wolverton Company, serving Duncanville, Southwest Dallas area for over 78 years. Wolverton has been a proud sponsor of Duncanville Weekly News since their day one in 1991. From H.W. to Thomas to Keith to Matthew, Wolverton provides the best heating and cooling and air conditioning service there is. Call them at 972-296-COOL. That's 972-296-2665. Then Friday, a beautiful Texas springtime evening, the Skyline Raiders were at Bob Brombeck Field, and Coach Scott Fay he exchanges lineups and explains something that will happen during the game that he just wants the guys on the field to know that we'll see later. Junior Ricardo Rangel is on the mound for the Panthers and getting them out in the first. In the Panther first, Mario reaches on the first of three second baseman errors. Then Nick hits a very clean single to left, and Mario goes to second. Ray is next, and he hammers it over the left fielder's head to the wall. Moving Ray to third and scoring Mario. After Rolando walked to Lodum, but this nice double play on the ball hit by Ricardo left it one to nothing. Panthers after one. We go to the Panther third, still one to nothing, and Mario leads off with a single up the middle, but he got picked off. Then Nick hits a high fly that lands just fair for a double. And Clayton courtesy runs for the Panther catcher. And he went to third on a wild pitch. Ray hits it to deep center to easily score Clayton. On the sacrifice fly. And it's two to nothing. Nicholas reaches on the second baseman's second error. And then Rolando walks and Nicholas goes to second. Ricardo singles to right to score Nicholas. But that was it in the inning. And it's three to nothing Panthers after three. In the Raider fifth, they have a runner on third with less than two outs. And this ground out to Mario at second allowed the run to score. So after four and a half, it's three to one Panthers. 
in the bottom of the fifth. No, you did not change channels. The Panthers changed uniforms from white jerseys to blue jerseys. Why? Because they could and to prove that they are a team. Prediction, within five years, the FUIL will disallow such activity and call it the Fahey Rule. In the Panther fifth, Nick singles to left. Then Nicholas doubles to left center to score the Panther run. And after five, it's four to one Panthers. We go to the top of the seventh with two outs and one on. And Ricardo strikes out this batter for out number three to end the game with a complete pitching performance. Final, Panthers four and Skyline one. The Panthers go 14 and four on the season and four and four in district play. Each show we have a play of the week. And this time I've been watching or playing sports for over 65 years and have never seen this. The Panthers team changed jerseys from whites to blues all at once, as Rolando shows us. During the game, Coach Fahey had advised the umpires that it might happen, and the Skyline coaches and the umpires had no problem, and that's why it's the play of the week. The play of the week is brought to us every game and every show by the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James. For all your investment needs, call John or Janelle at 972-780-0533 or come by at 222 East Wheatland, right here in Duncanville. It's the Pope Financial Group of Raymond James for the last 34 years. We're two weeks into district action, and here are the current standings. After... Two weeks of district action. The Panthers are the only undefeated team at 4-0. Pierce and W.T. White are 3-1 apiece. Richardson, Skyline, and Lake Highlands are 2-2. Two two. Molina and Berkner are yet to win a district game. What a shock. More district coming up. And here's upcoming for those Panthers. Tuesday the 26th, the Panthers are at Lake Highlands for a 7 o'clock game. And then on Friday the 29th, they'll be back here to play Lake Highlands at 7. Then Saturday, they have a non-district game at Cedar Hill at 1 o'clock. Then on April the 2nd, Tuesday, they will host those Pierce Mustangs. And Friday the 5th, play at Pierce, both games at 7 o'clock. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Duncanville Weekly News. We'll be back on April the 9th with the next edition with highlights of those baseball games and more. As we close, let's see some other activities from the City of Champions, and we'll see you April the 9th.